I wanted to share uh, with uh, with you some of the data coming in. Beyond my two classes, three other classes have uh, taken a look at uh, the uh, use of outcomes uh, from the institutional bank, EN120A, which we can see has had one in there, EN120, EN201, and ESL099. And for these, you can see the uh, average performance against their course learning outcomes here in the second column with the average here. Now, I've rescaled outcomes to, uh, to in order to compare between courses and between outcomes to be on a five-point scale. Uh, the course learning outcomes in the rubrics work on that scale where five is optimal, four is sufficient, and that demonstrates that the student has uh, uh, achieved that outcome. Three is suboptimal, and uh, zero would be no evidence. So averages above four mean the students have, on average, achieved that particular outcome, and averages uh, below four would mean that the, the outcome is being performed below the sufficient level. Uh, here we're looking at any assignments and or quizzes. Uh, they're not sorted out that way currently. But just a quick look at some of these sorts of things. And down here you can see the average against the relevant uh, program learning outcomes. Some of the courses are running against LA. Uh, I went back to the outlines to do this. Um, well, the one outline for... Uh, 201 notes uh, that they all report to the second program learning outcome. ESL 099 um, uh, uh, has, appears to also report back primarily to the LA set program learning outcome, liberal arts program learning outcome 2. And then the mappings that those have to the institutional outcomes, which can be seen here. And we can see averages on the institutional learning outcomes, the 5-point proposed scale and the 8-point current scale and where we're at. And so, for example, on uh, 80, the current institutional learning outcome 1, uh, a little low, but on the learning outcome, uh, institutional learning outcome 2, uh, we're just above the sufficient level. Just a quick look at this and, and some of the things that you, you can really do. You can get out data, see what the achievement is, drill up and down through stuff, and look say I just want to see only the English classes I can do that and I can see the overall average for English ESL math uh, MS that's 150 just my class and science so you actually can see the averages here as you uh, uh, they, they display on these drop-down menus as you're, you're looking you can see the overall course average as well so a lot of different ways you can slice and dice this data just a quick look at some of the things I was playing with this weekend. Um, again, uh, there's a lot of a lot underneath the hood here that I'd need to sit down and explain to anybody who's working with this on an assessment aspect. Remember, I'm mapping course learning outcomes to program learning outcomes, and those then map to institutional learning outcomes. Our current outlines make this process very difficult because no outline says where a course learning outcome goes. It says where a number of different specific learning outcomes go and they all go to different places. But both track that and this system work on reporting course learning outcomes, not specific learning outcomes. And so that's a much, a much more uh, complex conversation to have. Um, and so this uh, this runs on top of uh, uh, um, outlines that that are difficult to use in this respect. It's very difficult to make these determinations of exactly how we should map these because our outlines simply do not say what the mapping should be. They just don't say that, and the outlines, quite frankly, are difficult to read because. They list the program learning outcomes, but as I I've noted many years ago, we don't actually say what program it is. So when I pick up an outline that I'm not familiar with, it just says what the program learning outcomes are. But I then have to try to figure out what program those outcomes belong to. 
Fortunately, I have a master file of all the program learning outcomes and I can look them up. But no outline actually says. We only say what other program it serves. But we never actually name the program that the course serves on the outline itself. And that's why the proposed outline format includes a very specific mapping to the uh, to a, a labeled program learning outcome. Well, that's a say. Uh, that's uh, what I'm playing with, and there's a, a a good bit of work to be done in this in this area between curriculum assessment team and a number of other people to get this to come together in a way that we have uh, the ability to look at program and institutional learning outcomes uh, and potentially disaggregate by other variables besides just gender and begin to drill down and uh, determine where our strengths and weaknesses really lie. Thank you for listening.